Welcome to the Thunderbird Farm Handcrafted. My name is Genevieve and today we are doing something that I absolutely love to do, especially on this time of year. It's September here in central Pennsylvania. And so I always call it Shambori September. It's nice, it's cool, you're not sweating hot. It's not too cold to be using the water hose, but it's also not too hot to be outside enjoying the nice fall weather. If you're new here, I would love for you to say hello in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so they can get alerts for when we have new videos. And I always make sure that there are timestamps across the bottom of the video. So should you want to skip ahead or try this specific craft project, you will be able to go to the different parts of the video that you need to go to when you need them. The tea towels are such a great craft fair gift item um, super low ticket item as well. Um, so you can totally make a nice profit, um, but also someone can get a very nice gift for someone, uh, especially during the holidays. Today we're going to be doing the 8th century Japanese folding technique, Shimbori, using indigo and acid dye. The beautiful thing about acid dyes, specifically indigo dye, is that you can use it on a lot of different types of materials, not only cotton like you would a traditional tie dye. I've seen shimbori done in indigo dye on things like sheepskin leather, silks, and yes, of course, your cottons, anything that will absorb the dye. Uh, but I have to tell you, this is a great addition if you are a bagoneer, as I hear it called. I know we're all talking about the different terms that are out there for those of us who are creative makers. Uh, if you make bags, I can't wait to dye some really beautiful leather or something that's a heavy duty fabric that absorbs and do a shimbori and make a bag out of it because I've seen them and they are gorgeous. Let's go through our supplies. So I know it looks like a lot. I promise you, you can do this as minimalistic or as extravagant as you want. The beauty of indigo dye uh, and acid dyes is you can make it as light or as dark as you want. And I think that's the key difference between acid dyes and indigo dye compared to your tie dyes that you would buy in like a Michaels or your local craft and hobby shop. These are, are brighter, um, deeper tones because you're using specific things to bring that out in uh, the water. It's a little bit more of a science experiment than what tie dye is, as well as uh, you can also create an ombre effect. The more we dip these things in the dyes, the more they are going to um, get darker. So I'll, I'll be showing that when we get into the dyeing piece, uh, but I first wanna go through what I'm dyeing today and all the, the different things you're seeing here. So I do have some t-shirts from my, my favorites. I wanted to kind of uh, share, you'll, you'll hear in the healing part, how I firmly believe in the matriarch concept, which is women and the circle that that creates as one woman empowers another woman, what that, what happens and how that grows that circle. So I have some of my favorite um, merchandise from, from some of my favorite women um, shop owners. I also have strictly cotton tea towels, stainless steel, or maybe these are aluminum, I don't know. Um, teaspoon, tablespoon set. Um, this is uh, important, especially when we're measuring out dot eyes and um, this is uh, soda ash. Uh, and so the soda ash I buy in bulk, I now buy the indigo dye in bulk. You can buy the indigo and the, the ash in a kit and I'll have links to that in the details uh, for you. I also do have some uh, Procyon and uh, Jacquard uh, acid dyes that are colors. I, I have had great um, outcomes with this and not so great. So we're gonna do at least the jacquard today because it's this really beautiful, like, I guess, what are they calling it? Magenta, hot fuchsia. We'll see how that is. And then I do have an orange, which I might, I might add another batch, but we're gonna stick probably with two. 
And then uh, I do have my indigo dye, which I'll need to measure that out as well. I have a pH tester papers. Uh, these are important because we need to test the pH of our water. We want that to be a pretty dark, probably in the 11, 12 area. Uh, this is going to make sure that our soda ash is doing its job to solidify the color uh, in our in our items so that when it washes, it doesn't um, wash out. Uh, and I will tell you that a fresh batch of dye is always the best way to go. I have saved batches and then found out later that it wasn't the right pH and th things have washed out. So you want to make sure these are very important. Again, your soda ash, you need some type of tool to mix. Uh, I use one of these metal skewers. Um, I'll, I'll talk more when we go to mix it why I use this. Uh, so we're going to need that. I also have here an array of different tools I use for the shambori folding techniques. All right, so shambori, as I explained, is a Japanese uh, folding technique used with natural dyes primarily. And so you can use a lot of different types of things. Um, I mean, I find things all over my house that can be used. These are the little um, slots for one of those organizers for your embroidery floss, um, wooden um, different pieces, tongue uh, depressors, um, using uh, clips of some sort. I have these clips from us just doing our tent, uh, repairing the roof, and they're really great as far as like how strong they are. So I'm excited to give these a try this time. And since they're plastic, they won't absorb the dye like the wooden ones do. Rubber bands, you can buy batches of rubber bands pretty much anywhere. And you'll definitely want some rubber gloves because uh, you're going to want uh, to protect your hands because this dye will definitely stain anything that you're wearing. So that is the tools. Uh, also, I have thread here. My like, what are these pre-wound bobbins for? Uh, I'm going to prep everything uh, and show you how um, I'm doing some folds and also prep the shirts. Uh, I usually do this in the summertime and it is very cold today. So we're going to be minimal time outdoors. <laughs> so I usually prep this outside uh, because it can be very messy. But in order to film this for you and hopefully give you as best instruction as possible, I wanted to um, do this in here. So I have, it's, I think it's a five gallon bucket. Yes, a five gallon bucket. Um, it's our laundry detergent bucket. We get at Costco, we keep them. Um, they are great for this because I have a really good lid that seals and that's something that you want, um, especially if you're not going to use all of your indigo dye in one batch. Okay. Um, for a five gallon bucket, I've gotten, oh my goodness, at least three sets of tea towels out of it. Um, and you probably could do more. So um, I recommend that if you are going to keep it, uh, that you seal it and set it someplace where it's not going to be um, directly in the sun or heat. Uh, it needs to be like in a in a basement or something like that to um, just keep it the right temperature. Now, when you get your bucket, you want to fill it with super hot water. Now we have uh, a we don't have any littles in our house anymore, so our hot water is turned up pretty good for nice hot showers. So I don't need to do anything to get this to the right temperature. If you do not have super hot water um, coming from your tap, I would uh, boil uh, your water um, and then I would let it sit for about 20 minutes um, before you place it in your bucket and figure out your pH. So I do have my gloves on because you probably wanna wear gloves for most of this. I don't have a whole lot of gloves right now. I did not order more. I need to order some more of these, but I like these vinyl powder free ones um, because they're easy to take on and off. So I'm gonna just take these off to do the um, pH test. Okay, you're gonna wanna get your pH tester book, okay? You can see right here. 
and you want to pull out one of these little tabs. It's just like a matchbook. So it's a perforated little piece of paper. I just want to make sure I only have one. All right. I think I have two there. And we're going to dip this halfway into our water. Okay. And then that way we'll be able to see where is our pH right now because we want to bring this pH up. Um, but we want to see where are we right now. So I'm going to dip this. And I'll, I'll lay it here. The blue might make it look a different color. But right now it's pretty green. So I'm probably a healthy pH is actually right around the 7, 8 area. 6, 7, 8. Um, so I'm, I'm at about an 8. Um, so I need to bring it up to at least an 11, 12. We don't want it to be super acidy. Um, but we want it to be in that 11, 12 range where it's a dark blue. So I am going to take my soda ash. Okay. So here, here's my soda ash and my tablespoon. Okay. And I'm going to put a tablespoon of soda ash. I'm going to sprinkle it across my water. I'm then going to take my stirrer and I'm just going to make sure that it gets mixed. And I would let this sit for just a little bit just for those bubbles to go down because we don't want a lot of air in this. And then we're going to get another pH tester strip and we're going to dip it and see where are we at now with a tablespoon. And now we are right at that blue, that really dark blue. That's what we want. Now, I know from doing this multiple times that I like to add just a little bit extra. So I'm going to do another half a teaspoon of soda ash in mine, just because I know that that helps. All right. I'm gonna stir that. I know you can put your you can put your pH test strips aside. I would definitely put these away because as you start dyeing, water and dye gets a lot of places. So you want to preserve these for the next time you need them. Close up your soda ash because you no longer need it. Put that aside. Move your um, you need to keep your uh, teaspoon set though and your stir. Now that we have our hot water brought up to the pH that we need. Now we're going to add our indigo dye. Now I do have a link in the details for a Shambori indigo dye kit that's on Amazon. It's a hit or miss if they keep them in stock. Um, I'll also have the link for the larger batch that I have here um, of the indigo dye. And what I hope can come across on the video when I get a scoop of this is that you'll you can see the crystal of it so indigo dye is from the indigo indigo fura plant it's it's dried okay and crystallized it has been around for 5,000 years uh, indigenous peoples have been using it for forever to dye clothing and fabrics. Um, it actually was a primary reason for slave trade out of India. Um, they would force labor um, to make indigo dye. Um, it, it has so much history uh, and but was primarily um, many times you would see in indigenous cultures um, just a really beautiful way of honoring um, you know, what they wore. So 
You're going to take two tablespoons. I'm gonna hold this up to the camera. Maybe, oh, there you can see. See how it kind of glimmers? That's, it's, it's crystallized. So I'm going to sprinkle this across the top. And I don't know if you're gonna see it over the, the video, but it almost creates an oil slick effect, um, which you'll see more as we mix. Definitely close up your die once you have your two tablespoons in. If you're using the the larger batch, if you're not you if you if you get the kit, it's already um, measured out for you. And now I'm just going to take some time to mix this in. And like I said, it's going. You don't want a whole lot of air bubbles. So that's why I'm using something that isn't like a big spoon. So this part, this part, see I have air bubbles there. I want, I don't want those. I want to try to get rid of those as much as I can. And I just want to keep mixing, go along the sides. The less air bubbles, the better. you can see the oil slick look. Okay, so now I'm going to just close this up and let it sit because there are air bubbles in there that I want to settle before I start dyeing. So I highly suggest that you mix up your batch, okay? And then you set it aside probably for at least a good 45 minutes to an hour. And then we'll get to the dyeing. In, the, in between is when we fold. Um, so the next part of the video, I'm going to show you one of my favorite ways to fold. And then give you some other tips on some other ways uh, that I have learned different types of uh, shibori folding techniques. But I do have a link in the details to a Pinterest board of various other uh, makers who have shared their favorite folds. Uh, so the beauty of shimbori is that you can fold uh, so many different ways and, and create so many different things, just like tie-dye. Uh, but the other beauty of it also is that you can use it on so many different types of fibers. I, you know, cotton is one and it's the most accessible but as long as it is an absorbent uh, material, you can chambori on it. There's a whole array, as you dive into this, of other natural dyes that you can do. So I highly suggest checking out that uh, Pinterest board uh, and following it. I'll add as I go, as I try other things as well, I'll add to that board for all of you as well. So a little disclaimer and a little update on what you're about to see. So I share with you how to mix the batches for the indigo dye as well as a jacquard acid dye. Technically, the way that I do it should work. I used hot water. We have extremely hot water. I used um, soda ash acid powder, um, which should be enough. The pH should have been enough in the water to hold this acid dye. However, the way that I set my tea towels is I throw them in the dryer after they've been out on the line drying with the heat to try to set as much of it in as possible. Then I run a cold wash and run them all through a cold wash. When I pulled the hot fuchsia ones out, they are almost white again. For some reason, the um, acid dye did not set. So this is what I'm doing right now. I added a cup of white vinegar to this dye batch, uh, to the bucket that I, you're going to see me use in this video. 
I have those two tea towels in the batch right now as we speak, letting them soak. I'm probably gonna wait until I'm done here with this portion, and then I'm gonna pull them out, rinse them out, and hopefully they will set. Um, but at least you'll see how I'm doing the folds on those. Um, again, it, the, the folds on those didn't really turn out the way I had hoped either. My favorite to do that's kind of a foolproof beginner shambori practice is to use the indigo dye, use the traditional indigo dye. But we're gonna, we're gonna keep trying this. I, I highly suggest try the indigo dye, do exactly as I'm sharing here in this video, and you'll be fine with the indigo. It is very different because it is a natural dye compared to this, which is not an, a natural dye. So um, I love this dye. I really want it to work. So the first fold I'm gonna show you guys is actually my favorite. It's one that I did for my curtains here in the creativity corner. And it's fairly simple. What you're gonna do is you're gonna fold in an accordion, okay? It does not matter how wide you make your accordion. The main thing is that you make it go back and forth, okay? Then we're gonna do the same type of an accordion, but as a triangle. So I'm gonna fold it that direction, then I'm gonna fold it under, then I'm gonna fold it on top, then the bottom, just like an accordion, all the way to the end, all right? Then you could, if you don't have circles, I've been thinking about asking my uh, so Bessie over at Carolina Little Stitches, Kayla, about making us some fun circle acrylic templates. But these wood circles, I have a link for a pack of them from Amazon. You do not need to use these, but I like what the wood circles do. So I'm going to put one on either side. And then I have three rubber bands. So I'm going to take the first rubber band and I'm going to twist it around like so, so I can get all three corners, just like that. And then I just add another on each of these corners because I've gotten this one at the top. I'm holding my circle down with that one. And so there's one fold. All right. The next one I'm going to do, I'm going to use some tongue depressors for. And again, we wanna do the accordion fold. That is something that's pretty standard in a lot of shambori is this accordion fold. Not all of the folds are like that, but it is one of the unique pieces. And then I'm gonna accordion square like this. And I, I really suggest a great way to start is with either fat quarters or with uh, these tea towels, these cotton tea towels. So now I'm gonna create an X on either side with my tongue depressors. And I'm going to get some rubber bands, four of them. And each of the corners, I'm going to put a rubber band around and secure those tongue depressors. And this is tricky because you're trying to get both sides. So you can see my one tongue depressor already has moved, but I'm just gonna place that one back down again, find my other one. Whoop. And you'll lose rubber bands. Hopefully you don't fling them at anybody. 
That's the fun thing about teaching this as a class. Rubber bands go flying. Okay, so there's that one. So now I'm gonna show you one with these clips that I've never used before. With this, I usually use clothespins. We're gonna give this a try because these clips are, you know, they're nice and sturdy. They're the ones we used when we were um, putting the tent uh, together. So you wanna make a triangle and then again, you're gonna accordion in a triangle. So I'm gonna go all the way around from the center back and forth. Like so, okay. And then I wanna put two tongue depressors up here at the top. secure those with a rubber band. So one there, go down a little bit, do another one. And now I'm going to take these clips and I'm just going to position them, making sure I'm getting all my folds here on both sides. All the way down. If you hear Apollo whining in the background, it's because I have a plate of cheese. And he's like, but mama, cheese, cheese is my favorite snack. <laughs> I kind of want to make sure that these are positioned right across from one another. So there's another one. Like I said, you can do a lot of, use a lot of different things when you're doing your folds. So I'm going to accordion this one, just like I've done with all the other ones. Okay, and then I'm going, I'm not gonna make like full squares. I'm gonna kind of do this like a rectangle. If you have a little extra, that's okay. And then these here, I feel like I want to use them just there in the center. And then I'm going to try to kind of catch them in each of the corners. So we'll see how this one turns out. Usually I would say use a block of wood. That's like a rectangle for this one, but we're we're gonna give these little plastic dumahiggies a try. See, see how well, well they do. There really is, this is where it's very similar to tie-dye. You really can't make a mistake here on the designs that you make. I think just to hold that down, I'm going to put one across the center here. Okay. Okay. 
This one here is a pretty fun one and you need very minimal. So you need a, one rubber band, a nice big one. And what I like about this one is it kind of creates like a bubble effect. So you're gonna grab it at the one corner and you're just going to kind of bubble it around. Like I'm just like pulling it up all the way around. And I'm just taking my rubber band kind of like a messy bun. That's really all it is. This is a really popular fold. It's just a stripe. So you're going to fold it in a triangle like so. And then instead of doing triangle accordion, you're just going to fold it as an accordion across the top. Just like so. Okay. And then we're going to take two rubber bands and you can decide how close you want them to be. Just like so. Another pretty popular one, which takes a lot of time, is to do the whole thing in little like tufts. So you, what I'm talking about is like you take it like this and you just wrap the rubber band like so. Then you lay it out again, pull a little tough, grab another rubber band, like so. And you just keep doing that all the way around your center rubber band, tuft, as far as you want to go. So you could do the whole thing if you wanted to, or you can just do like a center piece. And then the last tea towel one I'll show you is with the um, clothespins. So I usually like to make this a, a lot thinner of an accordion. So you can really see the clothespins with this. Okay. And then again, accordion, but I'm gonna make it long. So probably three times, okay? And then I'm gonna take my clothespins and I'm gonna pin, let me get as much of my clothespin over that as possible. Try to make sure, make sure you're getting underneath as well. I really like those jumbo clips, but we'll see how they turn out. If they turn out as well, I mean, granted, we'll see how the dye hits them because at least with wooden clothespins, they're cheap and you don't have to worry about how much money you just spent. I want to make sure that this is kind of even. That first one isn't very even. <laughs> Maybe we can 
can move that one up and we can put one in between there. Okay, now we're gonna do the other side. Straight across from our other clothespins. Now we have all of our tea towels folded. Now I'm gonna work on my merch that I have. Um, so the one from Lauren over at Mormino, I think I want to do the um, the line because I think that would kind of look cool with the Stay Sharp with the scissors. Um, so I wanna do it this direction though. So there's my Mormino shirt. With my sewing community over competition, I think I'm going to do the top I'm gonna leave, okay? But the bottom I'm going to do the triangle. So you're probably like, Jenna, how are you going to do that? I don't know because I've never done it before. <laughs> no, I think what will work is I'll be able to dip just this piece right here and it will do what I want it to do. so and I'm just gonna dip right to that triangle point lens I'm going to accordion this direction okay and I want to be able to see like where does where does her logo on the back because I don't want to dip past her logo Okay, I'm going to accordion long ways, like so. Lens, I'm going to do the ombre um, with, with this, so. Okay, so when we go to dip this, we're gonna dip all the way to here first, then we're gonna dip all the way to here, 
and then we're going to dip all the way to here and what you'll see is it will create an ombre so there's Lynn's and now Anna's keep it up cutie so this is going to be interesting <laughs> because what I wanna do with this, and it's gonna take some time, so I'm probably gonna speed this up, is I am actually, I'm gonna be using thread on this one. And so um, you'll see how I do this. I'm excited um, to see how this turns out, but this definitely takes some time. So you wanna decide where you're going to do this, and I'm gonna pull a cone right up here right where keep it up cutie kind of starts okay and i have nylon thread here because it's a little bit thicker and i'm going to tie at the bottom of this base of this cone just a regular knot just to hold it for me i'm going to go down and i'm going to start wrapping this thread as tight as I can make it up this cone okay I'm using pre-wound bobbins that I got from sale right I don't like using pre-wound bobbins I don't know if you like using them but I do not like using them so this is a great way for me because I bought a kit when I bought my sale right that had a whole bunch of pre-wound bobbin thread. So I'm just gonna keep going. As you can see, I'm making this kind of cone effect right there. And I'm just gonna wrap the more you wrap, the more white, obviously, you're going to have. This one takes a while to do and a while to see <laughs> the end result as well, because you're gonna have to clip all these threads, um, but it really turns out very cool in the end. There we go. All right. Now we're ready to take everything out and start dipping and enjoying some Shambori meditation with some Indigo dye. All right, we're ready to dip our pieces into our dye. We have our Shambori dye that's in here in this one. 
And what I can't get the camera angle for, unless here, I'll take this out. Don't mind my hands so you can see. I don't know if you can see that kind of has almost an oil slick look here. Um, we want to scoop off that top stuff. So that's what I'm gonna do first, is I'm going to scoop off any of that kind of oil slicky look that has like bubbles. We don't want that. And this that will only be in your indigo dye. Your, your other dyes will not have that, so that we don't have that. And then our other dye over here is the hot fuchsia. That is the acid dye. So you won't, um, you won't have that same type of effect because it's not a natural dye where the Shimbori dye is natural. Now my lids might go shut on us. We'll see how it goes. So the first things that I'm gonna do are the things that are in the indigo and I'm going to just set them aside. What's really cool, and we probably won't see it because it's not a super sunny day today, is the oxidizing process of this. So when I pull it out, you might see that it almost has like a greenish tint to it. And then as it sits out in the air, it will oxidize into that very indigo blue. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna get started here. We'll start with our favorite, my favorite, which is this traditional um, Shimbori fold, which is the accordion triangles with the circle piece. And I'm just gonna dip the whole thing right into the indigo vat. You'll see the air start coming out. I say my ABCs to myself. And as you see, when I come out, you see how it's that green color. I'm just gonna press as close as I can to the top because remember we do not want the less air we have in here the better okay and then I'm just going to set this to the side I have an old table here so it does not matter if it gets full of dye um, if you don't have an old table to use I suggest uh, laying out trash bags or old cardboard okay um, the next one we're gonna try is our crisscross squares. All right, I'm going to just dip that right in again, pull it out. I'm just gonna try to squeeze out what I can, as close as I can. Okay, maybe you can see some of the oxidizing happening here where it looks more blue than it does green. I'm gonna set that one to the side. So I want to do Lauren's from Mormy Now. I want to do her shirt. Again, remember we try to do, um, I'm hoping, what it does is it does the lined um, version. So I'm going to just dip this whole thing in here. Again, we're going to say our ABCs. Now remember, t-shirts, when you bring them up, you want to just hold them close to the top to squeeze out if you you don't need to squeeze out a ton that's okay a lot goes a long way i'll lay that out and now i'm gonna do anna's sweatshirt so again this is gonna absorb this is gonna absorb a lot I'm just gonna push it down in there. Make sure that it's all covered. And we're gonna say our ABCs. I'm looking in there to see, do I have all of it pushed down? Cause I want all of it. And 
And now as I pull this out, because this is gonna be hard to not, and you can probably really see how it's green here. dripping. I'll lay that out. Okay, so now that our tea towels have been laying out, I'm going to re-dip some of those. So, because I want them to be really nice and dark. So, I'm going to re-dip my favorite. Okay, same thing. I'm just putting it all back in. And I'm going to say my ABCs. And then when it comes out really close to the top of my water line, then I'm gonna set it aside. Okay, and now one last thing I'm gonna do, because I see that I made some dribbles, is I'm gonna take one glove off, because I don't wanna get the top of this tea towel with any blue. Okay, so this one that has the stripe across the top, I got some dribbles. So I'm just gonna put the bottom part in the shambori. Okay. Now hold it there for my ABCs. ring as much of that out as possible. Okay, and I'm just going to set that to oxidize. All right, so we're done with the shimbori. Now we're going to let it sit for at least 15 minutes. I'm going to let it sit out and really oxidize. And then we're going to get to washing it all out. So while we're letting these set and just soak in some sun rays, last days of September, we're going to talk about the healing part because you know how important that is to me. So one of the reasons I love the Shambori dyeing process is for me, it really brings me back to connect more with my ancestry. Shambori, the indigo dye, it's been around for thousands of years. The first shimbori folding, it was given to a Japanese emperor, uh, but it has been done for 5,000 years and the godai has been used to dye clothes. And because of my indigenous ancestry, I really feel like it's just something that gets me out in nature. It also allows me to just meditate, relax, enjoy the sound of the water, the warmth of the water. Um, seeing the actual chemical change that happens specifically with the indigo dye. Uh, it just really is a healing process. And so one of the things that I feel, if you can find a way to incorporate something like that into your craft that connects you to something bigger than yourself, um, it, it's, it really comes full circle for you. So I love if you have something that is kind of a passed down or a, a legacy type of craft, um, I'd love for you to share it in the comments with me because I feel like we can all learn from each other and we can all grow from one another. And it's so important for us to know our past to be able to move forward in our journeys in the future. Another piece of the healing part of this for me is also a shout out to the sewing community and to the women's makers and content creators community. 
Now you saw as I've been dyeing some of the um, merch that I have from different women-owned businesses. I try to support as many women-owned businesses as I can, particularly usually in graphic tee form. Uh, I have a little bit of an addiction there. <laughs> um, and so I just really wanna give a shout out to Lynn's Handmade for as soon as I started to um, really dive into this online video tutorial community as far as sewing concerned. Lynn, Lindsay just opened her arms. It was very welcoming and very transparent. It's just who she is as well as over at Mojo Sews. Almost immediately we connected realizing we're both within driving distance of one another. Lauren over at More Me Know, I see so much of my younger self a uh, young mama self uh, with Lauren and her little one. Um, just a, a really beautiful person, very creative spirit. She's been doing it for so long. There's no reason for someone to call her sloppy and unprofessional. The girl's been sewing way longer than probably most of us. Uh, and I also want to give a big shout out to Anna Prezi. Um, I follow her mostly over on Instagram because I'm in the over 35 crowd. I don't do the tickety talk. Um, very much. However, she did go viral over there for her manifesting robe um, uh, videos and I've been following her over on Instagram and connected with her on so many levels. Her realness in everyday life and mental health and self-care and just how important it is that you just have the permission slip to be you. Uh, and so I love her keep it up cutie and her crying, uh, her morning session of crying tears into her coffee and all of that. She's just a really beautiful and transparent and open, real woman. And I love that about her. So another part of the healing process, and I would say specifically if you're a maker in business, is find the community the other women that create this matriarchal circle of one leads you to the next and leads you to the next and is not afraid of competition because there is no such thing. There's millions of people in this world. Um, whatever you have to offer, there will be people who want it as long as you are who you are. So that's the healing part today. Let's get to rinsing these out. I'm not gonna show that on the video because I have to go to the garden hose on the other end of our farm, <laughs> not the other end of our farm, but the other end of my driveway. Um, so I'm gonna rinse these out. All I do is I rinse cold water until I see that it's clear, okay? Once it's clear, I'm gonna bring them all back over here and we're gonna open them up together and reveal them and hang them up on my wash line over here. Now for the reveal. So we're gonna do the tea towels first. And we'll leave the merch uh, from the women in the small business community to the end. We're going to do this one here with the clips from Sail Right. I'm hoping because of how tight they clip, we're going to get more of that polka dot effect. All right. So I'm going to take that off. Very cool. All right, let's see what's next. Let's do my favorite. All right, I always, I love this one. I always love how this turns out. Like I said, I did this with the curtains in the creativity corner. And as you're pulling this out, I don't know if you guys can see this, but some of it's still green because it hasn't hit the sun hasn't hit it yet. Oh, and I, you kind of can't see it because of the shade. I promise you there's going to be a part of, there's a sewing part to this that you're going to see these dried, okay, and washed to prep for a craft fair. So if you can't see kind of what the actual design is, but I'm telling you, this is, this one's going to be gorgeous. 
So one of my favorites, it kind of creates like an X, but it, it's really cool. So let's do our, our two-tone one here, all right? That we wanted to kind of do at the end, we wanted that stripe. Very cool. Let's check this baby out. Okay, let's see what this did. I don't know if it did anything, but maybe. Oh, there's oxidizing happening. So this one might look really cool when it's all dried. Yeah. Alrighty. Let's do, so this one was the one that I dipped twice in the pink and then I dipped it once in the indigo. Alright, and it's the one that has the little bobbles. So this one might take me a little bit to, to pull. Yeah. Very cool. Wait till you guys. This one, because of that shade in my tree, but that's cool very cool all right i'm going to pin this one to the back of our other our stripe pink just because it's two colors two indigo ones left one that was our cross here and then one that is my favorite but without the circle okay so we'll we'll do the cross one the indigo ones it's going to be very hard to see until they're dry and then we have our standard one and I only dipped this one once so we'll see how that one turns out I think they look awesome I can't wait to show them to you dry because I'm telling you the dried effect is 10 times better than when they're wet the Indigo Shambori tea towels that I have at my craft fair booths every year are a hit. They are a hit with customers because a lot of people find them great gifts for a sister or a sister-in-law or a mother-in-law. They are a great price point. Um, you are able to get these tea towels in batches from Amazon. The link is in my details. Super cheap. And then the dyeing part is, is super fun. It doesn't take much. Um, your investment in these is not high. So your return on your investment is really nice. The way that I make these, ours, is I add one of our patches. And I'm going to share with you um, the patches that I have uh, for these. So I use, I, I go to Spoonflower and I get our logo printed on their canvas. I then cut these out, run them on my serger as you can see. And then all I do is find the edge seam and I just stitch them right on to the edge, just like so, I just stitch across there. That's all I do. I sell these at my booth for $12.50 each. Uh, and I find many times people are buying two, three, four of them at a time because they are just perfect thank you gifts great uh, holiday stocking stuffers for someone or even exchange gifts for someone. Uh, so that's how I make these. A fan favorite at my craft fairs is all I do is I buy the tea towels, the gotten tea towels off of Amazon and then do the shambori dyeing uh, with the indigo dye and add, a, add my own little tag to it. Uh, so I hope this will be something that you'll find to be a fan favorite at uh, your craft fairs. Uh, let me know in the comments if you give it a try. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, this can be something that you find you sell out of uh, at your next craft fair. Okay, so all I do is I find on the tea towel. So here's the washing instructions of the tea towel. So that is usually where I will place just right over top of that. That's where I'll place my tag. And I'm just gonna do uh, a stitch 
at the top, I usually switch it to my zigzag stitch just to really secure it. And I'm just gonna do a stitch, uh, go back a little bit, come down, go back a little bit, and then that's all that I do to add the tag to these. And there you go. Now I'm going to show you the shirts that we did, the merch from the different women um, that I fully feel like have welcomed me into a community who are real, transparent, um, women working hard, one woman shows um, for the most part. Uh, and that's really something I have, if you've been here for a while or you're new, um, you it's really something that matters to me. And it's one of the reasons we we're planning the Camp and Create Retreat here in June of 2023. Um, you can click in the details to go and get on the first to know. And it's an intimate retreat specifically for women creatives focused on boosting back or kind of reigniting that creative spark of yours. And also a women's wellness retreat just to recharge your batteries. Um, so check that out. There'll be more details as we move forward as we get closer, um, but that's really one of the big things that I feel is very important to me is that other women know that there's other women out there cheering them on. All right, we'll start with Lauren's. That's gonna be cool when it's dry. I, I doubt you can see it on there, but the line, the, the gray stripe goes right down through the scissors. Next, we're gonna do Mojo. I think it's gonna be cool once it's all done. So we'll see how that turns out. Next is Lynn's. Oh, but the pink came through. <gasps> I'm excited about how this is going to look dry. Okay, so the ombre effect will really show up once it's dry, but I'm really happy with that. Anna. Anna is the one that we did the nylon thread on. So this is going to take me a little bit. I'm going to be very careful with the scissors and clip it so that I'm not clipping any of the sweatshirt. Look how cool this is. Oh, I love it. The pink showed through to keep it up cutie, right where my boobs are. <laughs> um, yes, oh my gosh, so fun. This is gonna look so good once it's dry. So there we have it. I hope you enjoyed learning that process. Now to let them dry, wash them. Let me know in the comments what you're planning to do uh, now that you know how to do the Shambori Indigo Dye techniques uh, and what your favorite fold was that I shared. I can't wait to see you next week uh, for our next video. Please remember to hit subscribe, leave me a comment, tell me what would you like to see next on our channel. I just rinsed out these two from the hot fuchsia. When I rinsed it, I got a little bit nervous because a lot of pink was coming out in the water. We shall see once they are dry and I run them through the dryer and then run them through the cold wash. If anything, I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna get lighter. It's not gonna be this vibrant pink because I only did one dip. Um, but I think the white vinegar worked. We're gonna cross our fingers that it worked. Again, the most foolproof beginner way is with the indigo dye. I'm pretty sure that's the best way to go about doing this for your first time around without having to mess around too much with what's the right concoction. I, I never, have a problem with the indigo, but we're gonna hope that the jacquard acid dye that it worked this time. Well, we failed. I tried the vinegar in the hot fuchsia batch. That did not work. Uh, this is what they look like now after they've been washed in the washing machine. No, no detergent, no nothing, just cold wash, rinse, all of the, the pink is out. If anybody has any tips, 
this is definitely where I would love if you could share some insight in the comments below when using the acid dyes from Jacquard. I checked the pH before I made it. I made sure it was warm, the temperature it needed to be, it was hot. Um, then I added white vinegar to try to bring the pH up to make it solidify itself and that didn't work. So I folded these and just like in an accordion type of fold and I'm going to be throwing them in the indigo. I'm gonna mix that first and we're gonna go from there and just have indigo ones. Okay, here's what these look like now that I indigo dyed them. I know that this will stick just because it's a tried and true. But again, can help me out with the jacquard acid dyes. What I'm doing wrong, I greatly appreciate it.